The stock jocks and the bond ghouls are reacting positively so far to the April CPI report released earlier today by the BLS. Annual CPI on a non-seasonally adjusted basis was up 3.4%, down from 3.5% for the 12 months ending in March. Core CPI was reported annually up 3.6%, down from the 3.8% annual increase through March. Both the uh, CPI and core CPI month-to-month numbers was 0.3%. Owner's equivalent rent, which I discussed in a recent video, was reported up 5.8% annually on a non-seasonally adjusted basis. Uh, the the uh, this is also April is also the third month in a row where the month-to-month increase on a seasonally adjusted basis was reported at 0.4%. I discussed owner's equivalent rent. Uh, it's a major component of CPI weighted at close to 26% and more in core CPI. In a video that I published earlier this week that I will link in the more column below, I noted in that post that actual rents are not increasing and have declined year over year according to one service that compiles nationwide rent data. While the owner's equivalent rent, which assumes that homeowners pay rent to themselves and uses actual rents to compile what that number is, is still showing a robust annual increase. Owner's equivalent rent is a fictional expense. Homeowners do not pay rent to themselves. The method that the BLS uses to calculate the rent is, has a considerable lag uh, to it, and it's just an asinine, absurd figure that is distorting CPI to the upside. The home ownership rate in the United States is about 65.6% in the 2024 first quarter. Uh, that data can be found by Googling home ownership rate in the United States, St. Louis Fed, and that is a chart that shows the historical numbers. I would add that the Census Bureau shows that about one third of, of homeowners own their homes free and clear, no mortgage at all. I fall into that category. That would be mostly older people uh, and very rich people. Uh, another chart, which I will reproduce in my next post, comes from the St. Louis Fed also and can be found in an article titled, quote, Give Me Shelter, the Lag in Inflation for Living Spaces, end quote. That chart compares CPI without, <clears throat> without shelter, which is showing a very steep decline with just shelter uh, still being very high. Homeowners, of course, do not pay rent to themselves. The 65 plus percent of households that own their own homes do not pay rent. None of them pay rent to themselves. It is an entirely fictional expense. What homeowners uh, equivalent rent is in effect capturing is not an expense, but an increase in unrealized profits for homeowners due to the inflation in home prices. It is not an expense, but a profit item. Inflation in home prices is a potential expense for first-time buyers, of course. But if the BLS had any interest in measuring real shelter inflation, the weighting and owner's equivalent rent would not be 26% plus a CPI and more in CP, and core CPI, but would instead measure the percentage of households that cease renting and buy their own homes each year. So the weighting would be much smaller than the 8% or so weighting for those who actually pay rent for an apartment. But then that would also require every other category 
to uh, have weightings increased to account for the much lower owner's equivalent rent weighting, and I would not guess what the result of that computation, which actually would be closer to reality, would be.